polymer clay decorated bottles are really easy to make. Um, I used um, just kind of a generic polymer clay and you can use any polymer clay. Um, the softer that the clay is, the better it's going to stick to the bottle for baking. So I took two snakes and twisted them together to make kind of a rope design and then I pressed it onto the sides of the bottle. And then I just continue to do this. Um, before I did this, I laid out the label that I'm gonna put on it and I marked where that goes just so I wouldn't lay any decoration in that spot. So I put the, I put the clay around and then I decorated around the top of it and kind of hide the seams of it. Now the great thing about uh, working on a glass bottle is you don't have to buy tempered glass. Um, obviously you can, um, but you can use any kind of glass. The trick is that you want to put it, if it's not tempered glass, you want to put it in your oven while your oven is still cool and then turn it on to a low temperature and let it slowly heat up and then you want it to slowly cool down when it's done. So low and slow is the rule for baking on glass. So after I was done decorating, I put this in the oven and I let the clay cook and get hard. And then after it cooled down, I put a layer of Mod Podge on it. And the main purpose for putting this on there is that it helps the paint stick. Um, uh, if you use, I used acrylic paints. If you use something else, it might stick, but. Um, acrylic paint really does stick well to Mod Podge. I found that I could get away with just one coat of that, but obviously you could do two. So when I put it on there, I was really careful not to leave puddles on it. Um, and this was because it, too many puddles would take away the detail of the decoration that I put on it. So I mixed up some paint color. I was looking for something that was kind of a, a dirty white. And you want to have plenty of this paint because you're going to use it throughout the process and you don't want it to dry out. To give it a little bit of um, time, uh, extra time to not dry out, you can take it and put it in your refrigerator someplace cool. You can even put it in your freezer. It will separate a little. You need to stir it well um, when it's thawing. So I took the paint and I put it all around the bottle. And this is the really scary part because when you put this first layer down, it looks awful and kind of scary like what did I do I put so much effort into it and now it's just you know but keep going a couple more layers and this thing is gonna look great so again you're not going for super great coverage at this point you're just going for you know um, as smooth as you can get it <clears throat> long brush strokes where you can do long brush strokes and then um, obviously go back and around the detail and try to clean up any puddles of paint we don't want to lose the detail that we've got. <clears throat> you don't want it filling in with paint as it dries. So I baked it um, in the oven for a little bit. After after you let it dry, you I put it in the oven, and this is because I wanted the paint to really cure onto it. So I put it in a low oven right around 220 degrees for 20 minutes. Then when it got out, I let it cool down, and I put another coat of paint on it. Um, and same way this time, making sure that I didn't get uh, too much in all of the different areas. Now acrylic paint can be difficult to work with. If it's not fully cured and you start putting paint on top of it, it actually moistens the paint underneath it and then you can um, start wiping off that under layer and that can get a little frustrating. If that happens, just let it dry, put it back in the oven to cure and then have another go at it. So. Um, once I was done here, um, it, like I said, it doesn't look great at this point. We're on coat number two, and because this is white, white is pretty transparent, so it can frequently, you know, take several coats to really be opaque. So this is the third coat that I'm doing here, and you can see it still has lots of a leak through there. And for this type of thing, it wouldn't matter too much. You could leave that through there because this is supposed to look, um, you know, like an older piece um, antique like so a little bit of bleed through is not gonna matter you don't have to be perfect so but you can see the difference here that third coat makes it it really um, 
really looks way different than that first coat of primer that I put on in the beginning. So same thing here, finished painting, I'm gonna let it dry to the touch and then put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Then I came back with, uh, with some brown and this is gonna be really scary to start with. Um, you can add water to thin out your paint, but when you do that with acrylic paint, it dries really fast. So you have to be, you know, quick at uh, taking it off. And since this paint is is kind of a um, it's kind of a matte, well, it is a matte finish. The brown paint is going to stick to it quick. So I put some around and I rubbed it around with the paper towel a little bit, try to get some of the excess off so I don't have to go back too many times to cover up over that. But there is no such thing as, um, as mixing. So I can't put brown on and then come back with another color and mix it in. Acrylic paint sits on top of acrylic paint. There's, there's not really any blending that you can do with it. There are a few products out there that you can get, but they don't do, they don't blend like other mediums do. So after I got the brown on there, I mean, obviously it was a pretty stark brown. I went back to that original color uh, that I kept on hand and I started touching up where I thought there was too much brown and you can see it's, it's rather, um, it's rather see-through there. So you can still see the brown underneath it. It gives the appearance of, of the work that we did on the brown. Um, it kind of gives it the a stained look. I, I mean, you can go over it as many times as you want to, to hide the brown underneath it. But with this technique, I really wanted the brown to pop. So the decorative pieces that I put on there, I put some um, kind of a gold color on the top of it. And I didn't do it you know, I didn't do a real heavy coverage on it. And I went back with a paper towel and I would wipe some spots and leave them white, give it a more of an antique feel to it. They, you don't want them to look perfect. You want it to look like some of the color has rubbed off over the years. So I went through this um, several times. You know, I lifted the bottle up and down, make sure I got underneath it and to the sides. Um, trying to be careful not to get it on the, on the bottle itself, which if I did, not a big deal. You can come back with that original color and go over it one more time. Now, I was doing a very thin coat of this, so it's going to dry really quickly. And because of the fact that I wasn't layering another coat of paint on this, you don't need to pop this guy into the oven anymore. I mean, once you're done with this, you're good to go. So I'm just making sure that I filled in all of the little gaps, nothing obvious. I started with a, a gray colored clay. So, um, you know, if a little bit of gray is showing through, it's not a big deal. Had I started with red or something, that would have been a different story. It would have taken a lot more coverage to, to get that. So I came back with a little bit of white, anything that, or the white color, anything that looked a little too off, I just touched it up. Uh, Acrylic paint changes color as it dries. It gets a little bit darker, or a little bit more translucent, a little shinier, depending on what kind of paint you use. So as it dries, you're gonna see where you need to go back and fix it. So now I've got the label here, and I test it out on a piece of scrap paper, uh, the edges, because I don't want the edges to be a stark white. It's gonna really ruin that antique look that I'm going for. So after I trimmed it, I went ahead and, and uh, try to disguise the edges of it. I did, I uh, put a little bit of brown paint in some water, really um, watered it down. And using a paintbrush, it just seemed to wipe the ink right off of the print. So I just put a little bit onto my uh, parchment paper and I rubbed the edges through it. And if the water seemed like it wasn't quite dark enough, I just um, dipped a little bit more of the brown paint into it. So to affix the label, I just put a little bit of Mod Podge on the back of the label and I put it on there. <clears throat> and the nice thing is you can still move it around a little bit once it's on there. And then I took a little bit of the, the watered down brown paint again and I just added it around the edges to make it look a little bit more worn. And then any spot that I thought needed a little bit more of the dark color, I just used my finger and rubbed it and didn't want to get another paintbrush out and wash it at this point. 
So I just used my finger. <clears throat> As you can see, my fingers got plenty dirty washing it, or making this anyway. So what's a little more paint? So just about finished there. So the last detail that I wanted to do was I wanted to add a kind of a, I don't know, a seal on the top of the bottle, on the top of the cork. So I looked around my house until I found something that seemed to have a seal. And of course, this little guy from my kid's video game had one on it. So I just stamped it, baked it, painted it red. You can find more of this tutorial along with other bottles to make over at mamageek.com. Thank you.